So what do we need in order to do this project? First of all, we'll need a standard USB powered mouse. This one's from AliExpress, it was under five pounds. The second thing is you'll need a rotary knob. This one here is a 45 millimeter diameter, but it can fit onto a six millimeter shaft, such as those found in um, rotary encoders that we will be using, or potentiometers. Um, or, or things like that, so make sure you get one that can fit the rotary encode, encoder. The next thing is a plastic enclosure, this one here is 75mm wide, 100mm long, 25mm um, high. It's a wee bit tight fit in, so one slightly bigger would probably be better. Here I'm using an EC16 rotary encoder, this is without a switch and it sometimes comes up as an audio. Rotary encoder again. I get two of these from AliExpress for two pounds fifty. The next thing is some fishing shot. Um, this is number eight fishing shot. You can get that from anywhere really. Fishing shop. It's basically some small weights that we'll use to glue inside the rotary knob to give it some weights. But of course, you could use maybe M2 nuts or M3 nuts to do the same job. And uh, also, you'll need some lightweight um, uh, wires. You'll need a drill with some drill bits um, and also a soldering station with um, a soldering iron. So let's go on with it then. Okay, the first step is to weight the rotary knob. You can see in the back of this one we have three sections that can um, be filled with some weight. The purpose of this is to make it nice and smooth when we turn, turn the knob in order to control the VFO. I'm using number 8 fishing sh shot, again it was something um, that I've used before, it's small, it's lightweight and it's, e it's easier to use to, to fill up the spaces. Make sure you cover the hole that slides over the shaft and we don't want to get wee bits of uh, fishing shot or other weight in that. And basically what we're looking to do is fill up the three cavis cavities evenly and just spread the weight about. So again, just give it a wee shake until the, the fishing shot is spread um, evenly across the back of the, the, the knob. Once we've spread the shot about even, it's time to seal it in place. I'm using some hot glue here just to go right up over the top of all the shot and basically seal it inside those wee cavities. Now you could use epoxy resin or other type of glue. I've chosen to use hot glue because A, I've got it and B, it's actually easier to spread about and um, manipulate it into place. So just over the top of the three sections, we um, get plenty of glue in about it and of course we can scrape off with the hot glue any excess that we don't need. Once we've done that, the finished product should look something like this. Again, you're just looking to make sure the glue is below the actual finished surface of the rotary knob so it doesn't get, get caught up on the, the, the actual plastic enclosure or any anything else. So just make sure the glue sits down below the surface or the finished surface of that rotary knob. Now that's a knob prepared to be used, let's prepare the rotary encoder to be used. Now when you open it up, you'll see um, this is a EC16, it's not, doesn't have the switch, you don't push it down for a switch. And you'll see in the bottom of it, there's two tabs for uh, attaching a PCB. I'm just going to bend them flat, the reason for that is my box is only 25mm deep and it might hit the PCB board of the mouse. So I'm just going to make them flat um, and put them out of the way and I'm also going to make flat the three pins to the left hand side. Now we're actually going to solder some small wire onto these three tabs, so just bend them flat as well. Um, just so again, this is just so that it doesn't hit the PCB of the mouse that we're, we're going to put in our enclosure. Now, the wire that you're going to attach onto these, you could use some wire from some cat cable 
or an old PC, uh, PC monitor cable. It's not very heavy duty cable, so just use whatever you've got lying about. Again, the first step what we're looking to do is apply some tin to the actual three connections, and here I'm, I'm going to heat up and apply it or attach the first wire um, to the top pin. Again, I've, I've just used some uh, cable that was lying about that I had from an old monitor or an old uh, VGA cable. So, black, then I'm using yellow for the second one, and then I use a, a bit of red for the third one. Now I'm just applying a bit of hot glue and this is just to stop the wires getting broken off the, the, the tab when we go to fit it into the box. So. So let's prepare the box in order to fit the rotary encoder. We need two holes, one at the top and one at the front for the mouse wire. You can see here the bottom of this box looks very similar to the top and you'll see the minute in a minute. I double do a double check because I thought I actually had the bottom of the box, so make sure we drill the hole in the top of the box. But before we drill the hole, we need to mark it. So just get something with a straight edge and draw a line from one diagonal corner to the other. Here I just used a plastic box. It's only approximate, it's nothing um, major in relation to the actual position of the hole. So again, draw the other diagonal and where the points intercept. That's the centre of that box. All I'm looking to do is use my finger here, um, taking the centre line, transferring that down the edge and that will give me the indication to the front of that box, or the centre of that box at the front where we're going to draw a hole. Now we're looking to draw a hole at the very bottom of that box where it actually meets the bottom. Okay, and a hole in the centre. Okay, I used a 6mm drill because that's what I had lying about. So I just drilled a hole in the top and we need to draw a hole with the bottom and the box attached together. It's just so we can take a wee bit out the bottom of the actual bottom of the box really and that allows the cable to sit in nice so again just hold the two of them together and just drill down the edge. Now when you're using any battery drills or any other tools make sure you follow the manufacturer's guidelines and make sure you know what you're doing so you don't injure yourself. Don't necessarily copy what I do. So here you can see uh, the, the, the hole at the joint is would be spot on in the wire for the mouse can come out there. So what I realised is the 6mm hole wasn't big enough so I had to actually use a 8mm drill bit wiggle it about slightly um, so it would give me a 9mm hole in order to allow the, the neck of the EC16 to fit through. Now that I've managed to get the right size of hole in the box, it's time to fit the EC16. Now the hole that was actually at the side, we're going to call that the top, because it's easier to um, make reference to here. And the three wire tabs of the rotary encoder, we keep them to the left hand side. So just push the rotary encoder through the hole and you'll see that um, we'll just fit a nut on the top. And we do that hand tight with the nut and then we'll tighten it up with a set of pliers to make sure it's nice and tight. Um, but all we really need to do here is once we tighten it up, make sure the rotary encoder is sitting square and the tabs, the wire tabs, um, it's got the, the three colours of wire here attached to it, are to the left hand side when looking uh, at the top. Now the reason for that is it'll make it very easy when it comes to wiring the PCB um, for the mouse. So getting on to the final stages now, we take our mouse and we need to separate the mouse um, depending which one you have will depend on how you separate it. Some have just a top cover that flips off, this one appears to be in two halves, 
I'm just get a screwdriver in about it and be careful you don't slip and stab your finger. So just get a screwdriver in, pop it open, and again it's nothing fancy here, just pull it apart and we're looking for the PCB and the long wire which is attached to the USB cable. And that is going to be the main part of our um, of our controls. You'll see the small wheel here to the left hand side. It's got three solder tabs. Now you could unsolder it if you wish. I find it easier just to get a sharp set of wire snips and just trim that piece off. And that gives us access to the three tabs to attach the rotary encoder to. Okay, so we've cut that piece off and we can see the three pieces of wire coming through. If we use the two switches of the mouse as reference of being the top, here you can see the three tabs that we're going to solder to. So if we bring down our rotary encoder which is attached, again using the notch as the top reference, you can see my top wire is black, then it's yellow, then it's red. Well, we actually need to do that in the reverse order when attaching it to the PCB. So if we use those two switches on the PCB as reference to the top, we then feed the wire from the rotary encoder and we'll solder the three wires onto the three um, tabs. Now, I've just got some solder here and tin up the, uh, the connections because we're just going um, to uh, solder on here. Um, again, if you've desoldered the wheel you might be able to fit the, the three cables through the, the holes in the PCB but for us it's easier just to pull it through the main hole and solder the wire directly on to um, the under, underside of the PCB. Centre wire here is going to be yellow that doesn't change because obviously it's the centre and then we just give that a wee heat and it's uh, pretty quick and then the bottom wire here will be black this time although it's the top on our rotary encoder, it's going to be black for the bottom here and then at the top it will be of course red and that's the way it will be finished off um, again just need to make sure that you're using the mouse buttons as reference for being at the top of the PCB and you're using the hole on the enclosure as a reference for the top and you can see when the PCB is facing that way you can see that the red wire at the top the PCB is at the bottom of the encoder and uh, and that's really the, the main wiring part that's really it, it doesn't get any more complicated than that. So we're just going to apply some hot glue here to the underside of uh, the recently soldered uh, wire connections with uh, hot glue the USB connections onto the PCB, stop it getting ripped off if it's pulled accidentally, a bit of hot glue holding the rotary encoder wires onto the PCB, and then we'll just hot glue the underside of the PCB and stick it onto the bottom of the enclosure, and that's really us starting to finish off the, the actual rotary VFO here. So it won't be long now when we're, we're nearly finished. Should add the um, what I've done here is I've tied a knot in the USB cable from the mouse, and the purpose of that knot is just to give it um, the, the cable a bigger diameter. So once it's hot glued in place and the, the bottom half is attached to the top half of the enclosure, that USB cable can't get pulled any further than that knot and it will stop it getting pulled off the PCB because it doesn't matter how careful we are. Um, sometimes we could trip up on it or accidentally pull the cable from the actual, the, the actual PC tower itself. So adding a wee note into the cable gives the, the cable an extra strain relief for when in use.
Final job, attach the knob to the shaft of the rotary encoder and just use uh, a flat headed screwdriver and make sure the screws are pushing against the flat part of the encoder shaft. Let's have a look at the finished product, um, looks pretty nice, I've added four rubber sticky feet to the bottom of it just to give it more grip when it sits in the desk but with the weighted knob it's easily controlled by one hand and um, certainly looks the part. Pretty, so it was in paid out. And that's the name. Okay. I'm pretty, but your heart's getting broke.